The northeastern US state of Maine has long had a history of the paranormal and high strangeness to complement its natural beauty and vast wilderness. Within the writings of Stephen King and H.P. Lovecraft, the dark supernaturalism of the state has been conveyed within their fictional storytelling. Maine is indeed a place of haunted farmhouses, dark and mysterious forests and legend-laden seaside towns. However, of all the haunted and fortian locations within the state of Maine, nowhere has a reputation for the paranormal and fortian as that of Booksport, a town with origins as shadowy and as mysterious as its present day reputation, so much so that the town became the inspiration for the fictional Collinsport from the hugely popular American TV series Dark Shadows, which began in the 1960s. Booksport is a town with a truly ancient origin by North American standard historical timelines, first inhabited 5,000 years ago by a mysterious Neolithic culture known as the Red Paint People a group who settled in the region between central Maine and Labrador to the far north in Canada. Some theories suggest that the red clay people were of European origin and had traveled to North America from Western Europe following the coastal and ice sea routes between the two continents. As their archaeological legacy shows remarkable similarity to another group from the same Neolithic era in Europe. Their presence in Booksport was first identified in 1891 on the site of what was to become a major industry in the region, as well as in and around the town's main cemetery, which contains the graves of many multiple and bizarre homicide victims which have helped furnish Booksport with its ominous reputation. Yet this is only one of the reasons given for the haunted mystique of Booksport. Another one relates to the name of the individual for whom the town itself is named after. As soon as one arrives at the main entrance into the town, one is greeted by a graveyard. Here is contained the infamous tombstone of Colonel Jonathan Book, the founder of the town. Book was said to have had an illicit affair with a much younger woman who later gave birth to his son. Concerned for his own reputation, the woman was cruelly banished from the town by the colonel. She soon returned to Booksport, requesting financial assistance in caring for their child. Preferring to forget the entire matter, Book refused her request for help, and then, to be rid of her entirely, Colonel Jonathan Book pronounced her a witch and had her burned at the stake. During the fire, her leg was taken by her son, who ran away to bury it as a memorial to his mother. Legend then tells us that he had cursed the Colonel for his wretched treatment of his mother, and when Colonel Book died, his own tomb began to show the signs of a stain in the form of a woman's leg. Despite numerous attempts to remove it, including actually changing the stone for a new one, the leg image has remained, it is still there to this day. The reputation of Colonel Jonathan Book forever tarnished in the eyes of the world by means of having been cursed, so his wickedness would never be forgotten. A rather ironic haunted location in Booksport is Jed Prout's house. Presently it is a retirement home and one where the soon to be dead live in close proximity to the already departed. A large structure which was built back in the 1780s 
and the building has been used mainly as a tavern and a hotel over the centuries. When puritanical Christians controlled Maine, alcohol was declared illegal. This led to Jed Prout's house becoming a secret drinking den of smugglers, prostitution and gambling. In recent years, prior to becoming a senior citizen's home, the building became known as one of the most haunted in all of the United States, having been visited by several TV ghost hunting crews, and the house did indeed prove to be a den of endless paranormal activity and events, hauntings and other disturbing episodes which are continuing into the present. In 1930, the Maine Seaboard Paper Company opened its facility in Booksport. It was also on the site of a large archaeological dig that revealed the location to be another burial ground for the Red Paint people, as well as some other Native American graves. The mill soon became the main employer in the town and remained so for the next 80 years. However, it was far from plain sailing. The mill was the location of numerous industrial accidents, several fatal, to the point where many in Booksport refused to take employment there. Today the disused factory and empty railroad yards around the once fast facility feel strangely eerie and heavy with some energetic force that is extremely unwelcoming. With a reputation for a higher than average multiple homicide rate for a town of its size, even so, Booksport has one murder from the past that stands out and continues to do so well into the present. In the well-maintained and picturesque cemetery on Macdonald Avenue is the grave of Sarah Ware. Sarah was a popular resident of Booksport who went missing on the night of September 17, 1898. Ware left the friend's house and began walking home. She stopped briefly at a town store, and then she was never seen alive ever again. Eventually, her badly decomposed body was discovered by a search party two weeks later near Miles Lane. Bizarrely, her skull was found elsewhere. A local named William Trewargy was arrested and charged with her killing, but many believed him to be a scapegoat, having been framed. Four years later, the case finally went to trial. Evidence had been lost, some witnesses had recanted their testimonies, and others had died within that four-year waiting period themselves. William Trewargy was tried for the murder but was acquitted, and to this day the case has never been solved. Sarah Wade is now buried in her family's plot at Oak Hill Cemetery, and reports of her headless ghost wandering the streets of Booksport continue to the present. Some believe the killer was a prominent member of a powerful family, and that Sarah Wade herself was ritually murdered in some nefarious cult-style killing and that the powerful family who were responsible for her killing still hold influence in Booksport to this day. Many believe that her actual skull was never returned to her grave and is still in the possession of the family whose ancestors murdered and decapitated her. There is something ominous and oppressive about visiting Booksport even in the 21st century. The town which is guarded by the 200 year old Fort Knox leaves one feeling uneasy, while the paranormal reputation of the town speaks of past wickedness and tragedy, there is something of a present sense of dread and foreboding which hangs over the town even to this day, suggesting to some that Booksport reputation as a town of haunted corners, dark secrets and evil deeds is still far from over. There are secrets remaining in Booksport and which are whispered from the shadows to the sensitive and the sympathetic ears of those who can hear.